Hi everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 3.3.2.2, Configuring Rapid PVST. This lab is a part of the Cisco RNS Scaling Networks Version 6 curriculum. Now in this lab, we will configure not only the VLANs and trunking ports like we have before, but we'll also configure spanning tree and the specific mode of spanning tree is Rapid PVST Plus to make decisions on which ports to turn off and on. And I know it's a little hard to see because Cisco has put in these labels that cannot actually be moved. So if you try to move them, it says to move uh, annotations and notes is locked so you can't actually move it. But um, there are some ports that are orange right now in blocking mode. Um, again, you, you want to try to prevent the constant loop of packets around your network uh, with spanning tree. So the first thing we're going to do is enable the user ports on switch 2. All the end devices come in through switch 2. So we've got FA011, 18, and 6 that we want to enable and put in access mode. So we're going to go to switch 2, go to the CLI tab, <laughs> enable configuration mode, New interface FA06, switch port mode access, and then no shutdown. Okay. Then we're going to go to interface FA018. Oh, sorry, we'll go in order. 11, switch port mode access. And remember that allows it to carry one VLAN only to the end device and then no shutdown to turn it on. Then interface FA018, that's going to PC2. Switch port mode access, no shut. So that gives us our ports here turned on for each end device. Now we need to create the VLANs, okay? The VLANs need to be created before trying to assign any specific ports a VLAN. So for instance, PC3 over here is going to um, carry VLAN 30 on FA06, but we have to create all the VLANs first, okay? So we need to create them on all the switches as well, not just one because we don't have any uh, VTP or anything running to share the VLANs on all the switches. So. Uh, our command is just VLAN and then whatever number. So we need to do 10, we've already got the number one created by default, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 99. So VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and you can just type them like this and it will create every single one of them. So 10 through 80 and then 99. Go over to each switch and do this. Configuration mode, VLAN 10. Configuration mode, VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 99. Now, the best way to see if they're actually there is to do a show VLAN brief. And you'll notice 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 99. Let's check that here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 99. And on S2. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 99. Just to check to make sure we didn't make any typos. All right. Now we want to assign the VLANs to the switch ports, okay? It says port assignments are listed in the table above. Save your configuration to each switch afterwards. So up here, we've got on switch to all of the 
the VLAN or yeah, all the VLAN assignments. So we're gonna go back to switch to interface FA06, which is going to PC3, should be switch port access VLAN 30. Now we couldn't do this earlier while we were um I mean you could, but you, you really didn't want to do this earlier when we were putting it in access mode and turning it on because we had not created the VLAN yet. So if you tried to assign it to switch port access VLAN 30, it's gonna say VLAN does not exist creating VLAN. So it will create it for you, but just so we can create them all and not miss one, just do it all at one time. All right, FA011, switch port access VLAN 20. Oh, I'm sorry, VLAN 10. And then interface FA018, switch port access VLAN 20. It's always important to know what port you're assigning it to. And it says, uh, now we're going to assign um, the trunks to the native VLAN 99. So we are going to go to our ports, FA01 through four, make sure they're in trunking mode and put the, the native VLAN to be 99. So we can actually use the range command here. Interface range FA01-4. <laughs> and since they're all gonna be the same, we can do the same command. Switch port mode trunk, yeah, I'll turn on there. Switch for trunk native VLAN 99. And you're gonna get some errors here again because there'll be mismatches with the other switches until you fix it. So we did that on switch two. Now I'm gonna to go to switch one, interface FA0, or sorry, interface range FA0134, switch port mode trunk. Switch port trunk native VLAN 99. So we did, and you see it's restored. So we did switch port mode trunk here, okay, for the interface range. So we did interface range FA01 through 4, switch port mode trunk, and then switch port trunk native VLAN 99. Now I'm going to go over to S3 and do the same thing. Interface range, FA01 through 4. Switch port mode trunk. It's going to turn them all on. Switch port trunk, native VLAN 99. Alright, now we are going to configure the uh, management interface on all three switches. And again, that's our interface VLAN 99 here. So on switch one, interface VLAN 99, it turns on IP add 172.17.99.11.255.255.255.0. And no need to do a no shut because it already turned on. Now these interface VLANs are the yeah the interface VLANs are for management, so the switches can talk to each other. Um, they are you, you remember these are kind of like virtual interfaces because you can't set a physical IP address on a regular layer two switch. Now, if we were working with a multi-layer switch like that operates at layer three as well, which is a lot more expensive, we could actually assign an IP address um, to those, but with these we can't. So this is the way we do that. So um, interface VLAN 99 for switch two, IP add 172.17.99.12. And it is a slash 24 subnet mask. Exit out of that. Then switch three. Interface VLAN 99. IP add 172. IP add 172.17.99.13. All right. So we got that assigned as well. Now we're going to configure rapid spanning tree PVST plus load balancing. The rapid spanning tree can be seen in the evolution of the 802.1D standard more so than a revolution. So uh, 
basically, as the instructions are trying to say, remember spanning tree decides which ports are turned off, which ports are turned on, and furthermore, if there are, you know, if a port were to go down, maybe another one turns on and renegotiates and redraws out the topology. Now, there are certain switches and certain ports that will act as kind of like the bridge or the root is what it's called, the root bridge, uh, the boss of the um, operation, if you will, for certain VLANs or just for the whole thing. Now, what we're going to do is instead of having one switch do it for all VLANs, we're going to kind of load balance it. So certain ports will be uh, the root primary for certain VLANs. Other ports will be the root primary for others, and then some will be the backup. So if the primary goes down, then they'll have a backup. But it's to not just waste space here, um, it's to open up all the ports, but to only certain VLANs. So kind of to direct the traffic a little bit more efficiently and spread out the load to balance it. So we want to use spanning tree mode to configure it to use rapid PVST as the STP mode, the spanning tree mode. So we'll do spanning tree and then you do a question mark you'll notice it's got mode and then we have PVST or rapid PVST we're gonna do rapid PVST PVST is actually a whole nother lab uh, but this is the main difference in how it responds <laughs> okay now um, Again, with Rapid PVST and PVST Plus, uh, Rapid PVST does seem to work a little bit better with some of the legacy equipment as well as um, proprietary, better than the proprietary extensions of Cisco. So, uh, all right, we got that there. Now we're going to go over to switch one and two. That was on switch three. Spanning tree mode Rapid PVST. Here, spanning tree mode rapid PVST, and I'm just using a tab key there to finish my commands out so I don't have any typos. Now we're going to configure S1 to be the root primary for VLANs 1, 10, 30, 50, and 70. We'll configure S3 to be the root primary for 20, 40, 60, 80, and 99, and S2 is going to be the secondary for all. So we'll go to S1 here and do spanning tree again. This time if we get the question mark though, we see that VLAN. So we'll do VLAN and then 1, 10, 30, 50, 70. Okay, and then you do another question mark, you see root, and then if you do it again, it'll say root or sorry, primary or secondary. So we're gonna do the root primary for all of those VLANs. Okay, S1 is going to kind of be the point man for the uh, direction of traffic for all of those. S3 will do spanning, tree, VLAN, but this time we're going to do 20, 40, 60, 80, 99. Oh, sorry. Root primary. Okay. Now we'll go to S2, and it's going to be the backup. So we'll do all the VLANs, though. So spanning tree, VLAN 1, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 99, root secondary. So it'll be the backup for all of them. So if you do a show spanning tree, You'll notice it'll tell you whether it's in blocking mode or forwarding mode. Is it an alternate port? Is it the root port, meaning the main one? Um, the cost, remember, assigns um, the lower the cost, the better and more desirable the route. <laughs> tells you the priority. And it does this uh, instance for every VLAN. Okay, So sometimes you'll notice, like for instance here, it says that port 3 is the root for VLAN 10. VLAN 20 here, we've got the root port is FA01. 
So it tries to balance out the load across the network depending on what other switch is connected to. Now on S2, we've got to do something special for the end devices. So we want to configure port fast so that the uh, end devices come up quicker. So we're going to do, uh, we'll go to interface FA06. We'll do, we already assigned the, um, we'll just make sure. So we got the VLANs assigned, I believe. Yep, we do. Okay, if we did that earlier. All right, so we're going to go to each of the three, though, and configure port fast. So interface FA06, spanning tree. Maybe do a question mark here. You see, expand this window. You see the port fast option. All right, and we'll do the... Um, All right, so we do the spanning tree port fast. So we don't have to do the enable like we do a BPDU guard. So spanning tree port fast. And it'll give you that little warning there um, because again, you only want to do this to end devices. So then interface FA011, spanning tree port fast. Same message. Interface FA018, Spanning tree port fast. Okay. Now the um, again, this is to allow your ports to end devices to come in forwarding state almost instantly. So it doesn't take that time to negotiate with the switch or anything because it's on a PC. We need that fast connectivity. Now the BPDU guard, remember. Um, wants you to not include the PCs in its process of sending messages back and forth to, to figure out what ports it wants to block and which ports it doesn't based off the topology of the network. So we want to leave those end devices out of it. So almost like when we did passive interfaces with our dynamic routing protocols, we left the end device ports out of it. So here we want to go um, to each interface, FA06, 11, and 18. All right, and we'll do spanning tree. BPDU guard and then enable interface FA011 spanning tree BPDU guard enable interface FA018 spanning tree BPDU guard enable and voila we've got 100 out of 100 now again these uh ports here you'll see that in your show run and everything what we just configured um and that just goes through uh how to configure rapid pvst again the modes have some differences but um mainly the commands are the same except for that mode command um but everything else still stays the same between rapid pvst and regular pvst